Okay. Okay. Oh. Okay. Thank you. Um, my name's Kevin Guan. I'm a senior. Um. My name's Amanda. I'm also a senior. My name. My. My name. <laughs> <laughs> my name is also Amanda, and I'm also a senior. <laughs> Hi, my name is Kevin, and I'm also a senior. Kevin Liu. Uh, oh, okay. All right, uh, my name is Michael, and I'm a senior. Also, we're high tech high school. Great. Uh, for clarification, we have one Michael, two Kevins, and two Amandas. <laughs> right. Good morning. We will now be presenting our solution to this year's M3 challenge problem, the growth of e-bike use. The problem we were tasked with addressing is threefold. First, we constructed a model to predict the growth of e-bike sales two and five years from now. In part two, we determined the significance of factors in the growth of e-bike usage. And finally, in part three, we developed a model to quantify the impact of reduced usage due to e-bikes on other modes of transportation. Now, beginning with part one, we strove to predict e-bike sales two and five years from now in the US and the UK. To do this, we use the Bass Diffusion Model, a differential equation that describes how new technology diffuses throughout a population. When solved, the equation yields the formula shown here. F of t is the proportion of the market using the product as a function of time. P is the coefficient of innovation, which can be interpreted as a measure of external influence or advertising. And Q is the coefficient of imitation, which can be interpreted as a measure of internal influence or word of mouth. Because bike sale data was only available for Europe and not the UK specifically, we calculated P and Q values for Europe and used them to predict e-bike sales in the UK. First, we had to determine the market size of the US, the UK, and Europe, as shown in this table. And we assumed that the market size for any region is equal to the total number of regular bike users in that region. By assuming that the number of new e-bike users is equal to the number of e-bike sales for any given year, we were able to calculate the proportion of the population that had adopted e-bikes each year. Taking the sum of these changes up to each year gives us the total pop proportion of the population using e-bikes yearly. Our model consisted of data from 2012 to 2022 in the US, some of which is shown here. And here were our calculations for, the, for Europe, where our model used data from 2006 to 2019. We then conducted a least scarce regression to estimate the values of P and Q for each region. This resulted in the P and Q values shown here. Again, the values here are technically for the US and Europe, but we use the Europe coefficients to make predictions about the UK. The paths of growth predicted by the Bass Diffusion model fit very closely with our historical data. Even though the data point at 2020 deviates a little bit, likely due to the pandemic, we can see that the difference is negligible when we take the sum over all of the years. The graphs show that e-bike growth in the US is still accelerating, while in the UK, um, the e-bike sales have passed an inflection point and are slowing down as the market becomes saturated. These graphs here show the rate of change with respect to time and e-bike usage. We can see that the influence of innovation declines over time, while the role of imitation increases at first, but decreases once the majority of the market has adopted the product. To calculate e-bike sales in any given year, we find the increase in the proportion of e-bike users in that year, f of t, to the next year, f of t plus 1. And from there, we multiply by the size of the market to get the total e-bike sales. And the end results of this analysis are shown in the last column. Jittering the values of P and Q reveal that our model is resilient to small changes and consistent with intuition. Changes in Q, the imitation coefficient, had a greater effect than changes in P, which makes sense considering the graphs shown two slides ago. Imitation increases with the number of adopters, while innovation decreases as more of the population takes up the product. We saw a similar pattern in the sensitivity analysis for our UK model. Our model corresponds well with the historical data and considers both internal factors in Q and external factors in P. These coefficients are also easy to interpret and have <coughs> real world meaning. Because the BAS model deals with proportions, the model scales easily for different market sizes. However, many of our assumptions are only valid in the short term, making the model unreliable for long term extrapolation. The P and Q parameters also only consider word of mouth and advertising, and don't consider other factors like social norms and government regulation, which are especially important for green technology like e-bikes. 
In part two, we rank the importance of several factors in determining the growth in e-bike sales. To do this, we use the random forest model to predict e-bike sales with our chosen factors. Random forest models train multiple decision trees on random samples of the data and combine the results through averaging. This process is shown in the diagram here. We selected seven factors likely to influence e-bike sales that are shown and defined for the US in this table. These factors were gas prices, electricity prices, disposable income, government incentives, environmental perceptions, urban population, and the number of bike share systems. The same factors were used in the UK except for government incentives because there were no widely available incentive programs. To rank the importance of the factors, we use the feature importance attribute of the random forest models. The importance of each node in a tree is a function of how many samples reach the node, as well as the node's purity, which is how well the node splits the data. For each feature, we take the sum of all the features' node importances and divide it by the importance of all the nodes. The result is then divided by the sum of all the feature importances to normalize, giving a result between 0 and 1. Finally, the values are averaged across all the decision trees to get the final importance. This, this table here shows the resulting rankings for the US. It is important to note that we focus more on the order of the importance of these factors rather than the actual numerical values of the importances. And this table here shows the rankings of the factors for the UK. This is a sample of the US input data for the random forest model. Our data was from 2012 to 2021. And here is the UK input data, which was from 2011 to 2021. The mean absolute error of our models were relatively small compared to the number of sales, which at their lowest were in the tens of thousands. The importance rankings also make sense based on intuition. Urban population and electricity prices, which determine the cost effectiveness of e-bikes, were of high importance, while environmental perceptions were of lower importance. We perform sensitivity analysis by dropping each input feature one at a time and retraining our model with the remaining features. We ranked these features and subtracted the new ranks from the old ones. The changes were minimal, with the magnitude typically remaining within two of the original. We also note that many of the changes of plus one or minus one were just shifts due to the feature being removed. And we obtained similar results for the UK model. Our analysis shows that our model has a low mean error and is resilient against small changes. The random forest also captures multicollinearity and feature interactions, which simpler models like linear regression struggle with. However, the magnitudes of importances are difficult to compare due to the black box nature of the random forest model. We were also only able to evaluate factors that vary with time. In addition to modeling the growth of e-bikes and finding which features are important to people when buying e-bikes, we also aim to quantify the impacts of switching to e-bikes on some societal factors, such as carbon emissions, traffic congestion, and health and wellness. So here's our first model for carbon emissions. So F of T right here denotes the average carbon emissions saved per person. And when you switch uh, from their desired mode, transportation mode T, to an e-bike. So this first term right here, M of T times C of T over P of T, that denotes the amount of carbon emissions from their desired mode of transportation. And you subtract away M of T times C of e-bike when you uh, switch to an e-bike, as they will also emit some carbon. Now you multiply all of this by a probability of t, which is the probability that a person would want to switch from their transportation mode to an e-bike. So uh, we calculated this probability via two factors, whether like the cost of an e-bike versus their desired mode of transportation, and also how expensive the e-bike is uh, com in comparison as well. So here are some of the constants that we used, and also for like the average mileage for each transportation mode. Here are some further constants. This is PE of T, which is a percentage of population that prefers their transportation mode of T. And after plugging all of these uh, uh, constants in, we have F of T, the average carbon emissions saved per person per day in kilograms of carbon, to be around 2.5 kilograms of carbon for a car, 
uh, uh, 0.15 for public transportation, 0 for walking, and negative 0.01 for biking. And when you uh, calculate this for the total population of the US and the UK, that means we can save up to 105 million metric tons of carbon per year in the US and 18 million metric tons of carbon per year in the UK. Uh, we also conducted sensitivity analysis on this linear model. We decreased the car users by 5% and increased the amount of other modes of transportation proportionally. And as a result, we can see that the percent difference after doing this is around 5% less, which is to be expected, and it shows our model is robust. Next up, we also modeled the effect of e-bikes on traffic congestion. Now, notice uh, that when you're in a, an area that has a lot of traffic, then you'll be traveling really, really slowly through it. Now, if there's an area where there's like very little, uh, uh, very little traffic, uh, then you'd be traveling really quickly through it. And so this kind of like difference in speed, this, uh, which we denoted as like speed drop proportion per person, uh, we use this to calculate and quantify traffic congestion. So by calculating this SFP, we can find the amount of time we can save by switching from a car to an e-bike, as uh, in this equation here for delta t. And as a result, we can save up to 4.4 minutes of tra uh, in traffic uh, in the US if you switch to an e-bike from a car, and up to five minutes in the UK. 